Good morning. Uh, it's again a, a pleasure to be uh, in Dubai. And uh, today I will uh, talk about the uh, uh, video capsule, the colon. As you know, the video capsule uh, had been a, a breakthrough in digestive tract with small bowel. Personally, I'm doing the small bowel capsule for uh, last uh, 12 years. We have developed with Olympus uh, the small bowel capsule. Uh, I did also the uh, trial on gastric uh, capsule, uh, but it's a uh, pure research. Uh, colon capsule is a very interesting uh, tool, and uh, uh, I will present today uh, what we have done with a uh, world uh, endoscopic organization. And uh, this is part of the uh, training what we develop online. So all slides are, are available and uh, is mainly uh, developed with my friend Chris Canospada. As you will see during this uh, lecture, uh, Chris Canospada is one of the pioneers on colon capsule. So colon capsule, it's uh, 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 Pilcam colon is developed by, it was developed by Given Imagine, now it's developed by uh, Covidan and Medtronic because the company have been bought by Medtronic. And uh, the, the capsule itself, uh, it's uh, slightly different from the uh, small bowel capsule because, you know, uh, on the colon capsule, as we did in the past with a gastric capsule, we have two sensor, one sensor on the front, one sensor on the back. So uh, when we do the capsule examination, of course we could carry on and monitor where the capsule is. It's very important for this uh, device. And here you have two, two imaging at the same time. You know, when we, we do the small bowel capsule reading, uh, development, we, we could use one, two, uh, four, or multiple uh, imaging. For the colon capsule, it's, it's slightly different. We have one capsule, one image from the front, and one image from the back all together. So we would see the, the colon together on, on, the, on the both sides of the capsule. Okay, and of course we could review here. It's important to review could you one picture for one picture, or if you'd review multiple picture, okay? And uh, that is uh, really the important point. And the over technical part of the colon capsule, this colon capsule could be uh, initiate or sleep. Uh, that means when the capsule is a small boil, you switch off the, the light in order to save battery. Uh, because battery is very important for the colon capsule, even more important than we, we did for the, the small uh, bowel uh, capsule. So, and uh, this is the, uh, the aspect here. Uh, we, we have a uh, fixed four seconds, but now that it was the first prototype. The colon capsule two is much better because we have an adaptive frame rate from four pictures per second when the capsule is still and uh, up to 35 when the cap capsule is in motion. That is uh, really important because it, it saves time and reading, but it saves mainly battery. So the computer is able to, uh, to stop the, uh, the number of capsules when the capsule is still the same picture. Here the capsule is, is blocked in part of the colon, so it's just four pictures in second. When the capsule is in motion, we have much more picture. It's really like a, a total uh, colonoscopy. That is an important point. Uh, second point is uh, the uh, colon visualization. Uh, the visualization that is the first uh, first trial by Eliakin from Israel, and uh, the number of patients was quite nice, 98 patients. Uh, they say the adequate cleansing was uh, 
let's say, average at the cut collection, and the excretion rate, that means, you know, excretion rate is mean of the capsule reach the rectum, when the capsule reach the rectum. And uh, here, what we have done since uh, Cristiano Spada published in uh, GI endoscopy uh, about the same number of patients, but you know, the clinician was slightly better uh, with the same excretion rate, and Dorres conduct uh, multiple trial uh, in uh, uh, state, and it was quite large trial, uh, more nearly 900 uh, uh, patients. And uh, personally, I, I've been involved in a French trial, and French trial, we, we were able to collect uh, uh, 1,200 cases, and it showed very clearly the uh, clinical benefits of the uh, colon calcium in specific indication. And of course, the excretion rate was even higher. That is, yeah? I'm coming. This is an uh, important slide because, you know, we are doing a colonoscopy and we know when we are doing colonoscopy, the patient prep is not adequate. Uh, it's difficult to carry on the colonoscopy. Uh, but by colonoscopy, we are we're able to inflate, to clean, to suck. The capsule cannot do that. The capsule they get through the, the uh, colon without possibility of cleaning and this uh, you could imagine here for colon calcium is very poor because we have a lot of fecal residue and of course they could miss something again here we know for colonoscopy it's very important to clean and to look very carefully especially in the cecum especially in the hepatic flexure and you you see this uh, fair but you know I think you know poor and fair the results are inadequate and when we have a good uh, uh, residue, there is a small amount of feces, but you know, that's very clear, and of course, this is a perfect and excellent uh, view. That is, uh, this uh, table was done by uh, Jonathan Layton and Doug Race and published in endoscopy uh, in order to, to assess the quality of the examination. And uh, again, uh, this uh, slide on the uh, overall accuracy, when we know uh, at that time you know, there were competition with the uh, CT scan, uh, colon CT scan, ag again, polyp more than 6 millimeter or polyp than 10 millimeter. But you know, from we know for the Japanese, from we know for the flat lesion, even a small polyp could develop carcinoma. So that means. The side is important, but what is important to, to detect uh, as much as possible uh, some poly, but, but I will come back uh, later. But if you look about, you know, these uh, studies, uh, the, the sensitivity, the specificity, uh, let's say very, very similar from, from Israel, from uh, Europe, or for America. And now is a question of the uh, cleansing here again from Spada and detail, small polyp or larger polyp. Here is the protocol. Here is the answer to your question. When we start a protocol, it's a very demanding protocol, you know, uh, because, you know, the patient had to go to low fiber diet and uh, clear, clear fluid diet for at least, you know, uh, a, a couple of days. Uh, we use, you know, uh, senoseed pills in order to, to uh, uh, increase the ball motion. On, on the morning, uh, the day before, on the morning light breakfast, uh, pasta or clear diet uh, for, for lunch and uh, for dinner, two leagues of peg. So that means before uh, the uh, examination, the patient had to follow a, a quite important diet. And you know, when we do colonoscopy, a patient most of the time they don't complain be for colonoscopy because we use calcium sedation. They complain about the preps. And when we use, you know, two liter of peg and two liter and two liter of peg, they complain. Here, it's really a very demanding protocol. And uh, 
the, the morning uh, of the uh, examination, again, one liter of PEG, and we use uh, domperidone in order to increase motility. When we do small boil uh, capsule, most of the time we don't really like to increase motility. We, we just uh, leave a capsule uh, on the small boil motility. Only when the capsule is stuck on the stomach, we use domperidone. But in that case, we don't look up carefully about the small boil, so we use domperidone. And uh, we could use uh, also, uh, if capsules stay in the, the stomach, we use uh, erythromycin. Uh, and uh, when uh, the capsule uh, is on the small boil detection, and it's very important because, you know, with a the small reader uh, attached to the patient, we could see where the capsule is. We uh, give uh, fleet phosphosoda in as a first booster. So, you know, we. What the goal? The goal is to s the capsule stay as much, uh, uh, little as possible in the stomach. And when the capsule is on the small boil, we try to speed up the uh, capsule in the small boil until the capsule reach uh, the, uh, the cecum. And when the capsule reach the cecum, we give again uh, a second booster. So, because we know from the small boil, when the capsule reach the cecum, they could stay very long in the cecum. You could stay for hours if you don't use. When you give a, a capsule to your patient with small boil, sometimes when the capsule stay for a couple of days in the cecum without moving, and so we need the second booster. But it was the first protocol, and we're still using. Of course, uh, we, we have this protocol. Uh, we have been developed by Cristiano Spada, uh, published in uh, Digital Endoscopy. It's a, it's a new protocol. They, they use more Senna tablet, uh, low diazid, where also include, and they s use a split dose of, of PEG. And uh, this is uh, the protocol uh, that we are using now. Uh, Christian also published in GUT two years ago. So it's a little bit less demanding. So we, we use at bedtime, day before, you know, again, Senna in order to, to speed the, the motion, boil motion, all the day a clear diet, and like we did in the past in colonoscopy, two liter the day before of PEG, two liter early morning uh, of PEG. And then we have a capsule injection, and again, uh, what we use in order to speed a little bit is to, to use the uh, uh, phosphosoda, but also uh, gastrographin, because gastrographin uh, is a way to, to speed up uh, after the small bolt detection. So one boost, two boosts, and if necessary, uh, a suppository of uh, bisacodyl. But still, uh, it's an important protocol in order to get uh, a clean uh, capsule uh, examination. Okay? What, what is the result? You know, the picture, the picture are quite amazing. Uh, we were very surprised about the quality of the picture. Y you could see uh, here the, the, the uh, mucosal pattern uh, is uh, quite nicely detailed. Of course, it's not high definition endoscopy, but it's at least, you know, the same definition when we get with the first generation of electronic endoscope or with a uh, fiber colonoscope, which is quite nice, and we have been using for many years. So, so you see the, the overall uh, aspect are quite nice, and uh, you could see some small diverticula here, in here. Of course, the aspect is slightly different from the uh, colon because, you know, we, we don't have uh, infl air inflation. Uh, again, you, you can see here, you know, small diverticula here, 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 and uh, it's quite nice. Uh, that is more difficult. You see the preps is not totally adequate. They have some remnant. And you could see here a small polyp. Here it's easier. And again, you could see the polyp here. It's not so obvious. But at least, you know, in that case, the polyp in two good view. 
one other point, it's important when you did the colon capsule, you know, you, you record. So when you have a difficulty to assess, you use the viewer and uh, you roll all the data. So in, out, uh, and in order to assess these small polyps. Again, uh, you could see angioma, very nice angioma, uh, multiple uh, angioma on the, on the cecum. Again, your definition is a good one. So uh, the, the first tri trial from uh, Cristiano Spada uh, here, uh, the, the result was, you know, in five or 25, 20% did not detect any s polyp of any size. Uh, and uh, uh, the colonoscopy carrion after the capsule, and uh, in 20 to 25 to 80% of the patient, colonoscopy uh, was detected with a polyp, uh, you know, the sign was uh, diffi difficult. So uh, you see they have some false positive and only the size, but you know, does, you know, the size doesn't matter. What is really important is to detect polyp or not detect polyp, not, not about the size. So uh, in state, uh, Doug Rex uh, was in charge of uh, American studies. So they, they took patients with average risk screening population. What is really what we are doing for FOBT now? We cannot colonoscope all the European, all the Arabic, or all the American population. So for the average risk screening population, we use FOBT and uh, the new uh, immunologic FOBT, which is much more performant. So I it's exactly the same kind of population. The uh, colon capsule was done first, carrying on first, and you know, they, they were centralized uh, the reader in order to have really homogeneous uh, studies and uh, the uh, optical colonoscopy was performed four to six weeks later blind to the result of the colon capsule and then uh, an optical procedure was repeat if the uh, capsule detect false positive for le le larger lesion but you know it's a it's a three step first we do a colon capsule uh, with homogeneous result because we have a, a central reader. And then uh, four to six weeks later, we do the uh, colon capsule. That is not the protocol what we are using now. Now, we, I will talk later on, but you know, now we try to organize for the patient the colon capsule and if necessary, the colonoscopy at the end of the day of the day after. And of course, they could repeat in case of false positive. Okay, so what is the result? Uh, the result, first of all, you know, the, the adequate cleaning, it's 80%. Again, uh, if you refer to colonoscopy, this is quite poor. Uh, now, nowadays, uh, for colonoscopy, we consider that 95% of the patient should have adequate cleaning. That is really important for quality uh, assessment of colonoscopy. So even with a protocol, 20% of, uh, of the capsule, they don't have uh, adequate cleaning. That is a large number. And you have to bear in mind that the cost of capsule this cost of capsule is uh, about 600 US dollar. What is high cost in 20% of the procedure, you know, the procedure was not adequate in assess. The accretion rate is not too bad, but again, we have to compare with the total colonoscopy. Now we consider uh, in uh, average hand, uh, total colonoscopy, the cecum should be reached in 95% of the cases. When you perform colonoscopy with a modern colonoscope, with variable stiffness and uh, all the uh, new equipment, you should reach the cecum in 95%, except, of course, if you have a stenosis. But, you know, for normal patient, 95%. Again, it's is close, but not at the same level. 
And again, you know, they differentiate, you know, the, s the sensitivity and the specificity for, of course, uh, very small polyp or uh, l larger polyp. And larger polyp is quite nice uh, result because, you know, uh, even when we do colonoscopy, the miss uh, rate is, you know, 5% is not a very high level of miss rate. Uh, the, the accuracy uh, is... Uh, uh, what they did, uh, this is uh, just at the first step. First step, colon capsule and colonoscopy. And then uh, when they have a false negative, you know, after uh, the m -blind studies, they repeat the examination. Uh, and of course, when in 45 patient, you know, the sensitivity was uh, still correct, but the specificity was low. That is very important. That, that means when you have a large lesion, the capsule, colonoscopy, and, and, uh, and uh, peel cam, they have very good sensitivity and specificity. But when there's a small lesion, five millimeter, and the specificity is going down very rapidly. Okay. Uh, this is uh, some studies, a uh, picture from these studies. Of course, you know, this is very nice. You see perfectly, you know, this uh, very large polyp with the stalk of the polyp and uh, the detail of the mucosa. You could see, uh, if you look about, you know, the Japanese classification is a nice two polyps that benign could be removed by endoscopy. Uh, that is a uh, very good good aspect. Another point, uh, we just talk about polyp, now we are talking about the neocolorectal cancer. What is important in the multiple studies from Elia King, Spada, uh, Rex, uh, or Adler, you know, uh, there are 10 colorectal ca cancer that were all detected by the capsule. That is really important point for patients with colorectal cancer, the capsule reached the same level of, of detection by the colonoscopy. This is uh, the European guideline. The European guideline had been uh, published uh, four years ago, and it's a summary of uh, various uh, studies, uh, uh, column capsule one, two, and, uh, and one of the pioneers is uh, Eliakin, but the largest one was uh, the uh, uh, study in Brussels by uh, Van Gosson, and uh, that means, you know, for European society, colon capsule is feasible, safe, and accurate in average and risk patient. That is really important, so that means for screening, the colon capsule is accurate. And of course, uh, the colon capsule uh, could be uh, uh, cost-effective for screening compared to colonoscopy. But we, I will talk later on about these two points, because it's a very crucial point. And uh, the colon capsule is suitable in fact, but you know, the number of indications are very limited. And uh, in, of course, average subjects, patient non-compliant to colonoscopy. I think, you know, this uh, statement it's a very, very, very doubtful. Because when you explain to the patient, you know, you have a, a lot of patients who say, okay, I don't would like to have colonoscopy, I'm fair of sedation, I'm fair of perforation, and so and so. And of course, if you are a physician, you'd say, okay, to the patient, you have to have a colon capsule. If you are a radiologist, you have a colon capsule. But if you are an endoscopist, and you explain to your patient, but if you do the colon capsule, you do uh, the protocol, what is very demanding for the preps, and if we found with a colon capsule a polyp, you say, you have to go to a colonoscopy. So when you explain very nicely, now with a conscious sedation, colonoscopy is a very easy and painless examination. With a modern preps, with a uh, movie prep, two liters of movie prep is much more acceptable. And you say, 
when you do when you perform colonoscopy, when I perform a colonoscopy to my patient, I do diagnosis and treatment. Most of the patient, if you take the time to explain the procedure, to explain the concept, you know, that means you know the patient non-compliant is very, 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 very low. What is important is uh, uh, this. Uh, when colonoscopy is inappropriate or not possible. Uh, I'm, I'm working in an hospital where we have a lot of uh, uh, cardiologic patients. We have a large uh, medical and surgical cardiologic department. And of course, when you have a patient with a, a cardiopathy treatment, uh, anticoagulant, sometimes large myocardial inf uh, infarction, you know, for three four to four months, the cardiologists are very reluctant when a patient is bleeding to perform colonoscopy. So in that case, it's very interesting to use the colon capsule. But in my department, this is a free patient a year, and we are doing 6,000 colonoscopy. But this, three, five, but this is a good indication, because you, you make the diagnosis, and if you find a polyp, you, you could say to the patient, later on, we'll remove a polyp. So this is a and the second good indication, in some patients, even with a high skill, uh, with a modern colonoscope, uh, very long colon, with, with sometimes colonoscopy is incomplete. In that indication, you know, the colon capsule is quite uh, useful. So that means, you know, for EAG and in practice, uh, non-compliant, inappropriate, or incomplete colonoscopy. And this is uh, the, the result of the uh, second generation la capsule uh, by done by uh, Cristiano Spada. And you know, most of the recommendation for the guideline for European society is based on these uh, studies published uh, in gastroenterology three years ago. And uh, this is another one. Uh, this is another studies published uh, in GUT two years ago compare colon capsule with CT colonoscopy. You know, CT colonoscopy had been very, very uh, enthusiastic tool 10 years ago, especially in state. And then when we published the data concerning the small polyp, you know, the, the, uh, this uh, CT colonoscopy is not anymore popular in state because it's not anymore reimbursed. So, what is the comparison between, you know, the colon capsule and, and the CT colonoscopy? Okay, uh, one of the patients had been included, just three patients refused or artifact. And you see this is the result. Uh, colon capsule, CT colonoscopy, you know, 90% uh, about, you know, the same was able to complete due to poor sigmoid dissension or patient refuse. So that means the overall results are very similar. And uh, 97 patients have been included with a polyp more than six uh, millimeter because you know, uh, everybody know the uh, CT is not able to detect under six. And uh, for polyp uh, more than 10 millimeter, you could see the, the overall result. And uh, of course, patient preference uh, prefer uh, capsule than CT colonoscopy. For of course, it's normal because you know CT colonoscopy is very uncomfortable. You know, you have to have a cannula in the, in the rectum. You have to inflate the colon, and most of the patients they are really complaining for the protocol analysis. And you see, this is the uh, result here. You could see this polyp and this polyp in CT colonoscopy. And uh, again, you know, the difficulty of this diagnosis, and it was this lesion. But you know, in some cases like that, it's very, very difficult to assess this small lesion with a capsule. So uh, the, the overall uh, differences, you know, of the detection of the cecum, non polypolyd so the overall result of this slide, very busy slide, that colon capsule is better than CT colonoscopy. That is very clear from this publication. 
So, in summary, uh, with the uh, second generation PILCAM 2, uh, accuracy is good, very good accuracy, that is clear. Uh, but uh, at that time, uh, city colon, uh, colon capsule is not an alternative to colonoscopy. Conventional colonoscopy still the gold standard, and the colon capsule is just complementary. Uh, colon capsule is uh, indicated very uh, average risk patient, patient non-compliant, inappropriate, and so on. The ID uh, should be with one capsule to see the esophagus, stomach, small boil, illocal valve, uh, second up to rectum. But that is uh, the uh, ID. We know from the stomach if we don't have a, a guided capsule, it's impossible to see properly all the stomach. We, we know they have a conflict of interest. A small bowel, we need to have a, as much as picture of a small bowel. When we do colon capsule, we need to have a very speedy uh, small bowel. So, uh, the, what is important, you know, the colon capsule, they have significant finding and guide for further diagnosis and therapeutic treatment is safe. Uh, but, you know, what is important point? Colon capsule, they are still disadvantaged. First is a PrEP. PrEP is very, is very demanding, more demanding than colonoscopy. Uh, colon capsule is diagnosis. We need to have a colonoscopy in order to remove a polyp. Colon capsule at the cost, 600 US dollar, that's clear. And uh, I don't know in, uh, in Dubai, in the Emirates, but you know, in Europe, in state, small bowel capsule and reimbursement. Colon capsule, we don't have any reimbursement. So the patient had to pay, or private uh, insurance had to pay. It's not reimbursement uh, endoscopy. And of course, we, we have a limited number of evidence, but it's still 